44. How to live with yourself. Part 10. Hands off. February the 3rd, 1954. Good morning, friends. No doubt most of you have experienced something similar to my friend's experience, who spent all of one winter scraping and soaking some paint off a beautiful old table and chair set made of cherry wood. Finally, he had the ugly paint off and gave the chairs the coat of clear varnish that he felt would show off the beauty of the wood. But he had a messy job on his hands because his wife, his two children, and every friend that came by touched the chairs to see if the fast drying varnish had dried yet. With some people, a hands off, do not touch or wet paint sign only invites meddling. But before we feel too superior to such people, let's remember that most of us are natural born meddlers. We may be very prim and proper about keeping our fingers off fresh paint or varnish. But how about the people's lives and private affairs we so cheerfully meddle with? Keeping our fingers off fresh paint doesn't make us virtuous, although it does keep our fingers clean. The worst kind of meddling we do is with our own lives. We claim to be Christians. We say that we've surrendered our lives to the Lord, and yet we go on acting as though we were in control. We tell God our lives belong to Him, and then walk off with the keys, or else hug the steering wheel and ask Him to take the back seat. Is it any wonder that we have trouble living with ourselves? If we can't trust God with our lives, how can we dare trust ourselves? If we are dubious about leaving things in His hands, How can we ever hope to rest easy as long as they are in our hands? Some years ago, a young freshman at Yale, class of 1909, decided to stop meddling with his life. He came from a famous family. Anyone who reads ads knows the name, and he had all kinds of wealth. But William Whiting Borden realized that he himself could do nothing but mess up his life. And so young Borden, as a freshman, jotted down these words in his notebook. Lord Jesus, I take hands off as far as my life is concerned. I put thee on a throne in my heart. Change, cleanse, use me as thou shalt choose. I shall take the full power of thy Holy Spirit. I thank thee. Young Borden died eight years later, a missionary in Egypt, a man whose life still carries an influence simply because Borden indeed had stopped meddling and had taken hands off his own life. I know this is a hard thing to do. None of us have any right to complain about nagging backseat drivers when we consider how we treat God. We feel it's all right for him to take the wheel as long as he does what we want him to do. We go to him with a list of things we want him to do for us, and rarely do we ask what we can do in his service. And yet, when we become Christians, the Lord hangs a hands off sign in our lives. And asks us to leave everything to him. We are assured that if we do as we are told, we quote, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Proverbs 1.33. But we keep meddling as though God were incompetent. And that's a much worse thing than touching a little wet paint with the tips of our fingers. Now, be honest with yourself. Are you a meddler where your own life is concerned? Do you find it difficult really to trust God with yourself and your problems? If so, do you realize that what you are doing is placing your intelligence above God, and such an act is nothing but foolishness and sin? A long time ago, David found that in time of trouble, his only real consolation and hope was this that his life was not in his hands, but in the Lord's. His Psalms are an expression of that faith. James Moffat has given us a beautiful paraphrase of the first two verses of David's Psalm 62. Leave it all quietly to God, my soul. My rescue comes from Him alone. Rock, rescue, refuge, He is all to me. Never shall I be overthrown. Psalm 62, 1-2 Turn to Him this day and lay all your burdens down before Him. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. 1 Peter 5 7. He says unto us, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew 11, 28 and 29.